probably going to talk about, um, is that you're also seeing, uh, again, a transfer of wealth from people who probably can least afford it or don't understand what they're doing to uh, corporate insiders and promoters. And this was one of the big lessons of 99-2000. And I think that, that it's also one of the reasons why the backlash to fraud is always so great. And so I teach a course, as you know, in the history of financial market yeah. fraud. And the fraud cycle always follows the financial cycle and business cycle, but with a lag. And the longer the bull market and expansion goes on, the more people begin to drop you know, their sense of disbelief and, and begin to believe things that are too good to be true. But the corollary to that is, is that the, the uh, greatest defense attorney and the harshest prosecutor for a company is its stock price. Because as long as stock prices are going up, no one really cares that the company's massaging its numbers or playing games with pro forma or, uh, or, or outright fraud. But the minute people start losing money in a, in, a, in a big way, they begin to basically say, well, it wasn't my insane levels of leverage or didn't understand what I was doing when I bought Enron. It's, it's actually, you know, management are crooks and they stole from me and you better do something about this. And so that is still ahead of us in, in, uh, uh, in this cycle. But uh, my point, I guess, is, is that um, people are going to do crazy things. They don't understand that, that what they're doing is basically like a casino and that even if they're not paying commissions, they need to understand things like bid ask spreads and, uh, and that. And of course, they're going to trade themselves into oblivion. You and I both know that. No, it, it's, uh, that, that is one of the very clear challenges.